glycerol stocks of your bacteria is super simple. You can even do it at the same time you're doing mini preps and it can save you time and money in the future. Basically, it's a way in which you can stick bacteria, including bacteria that have a plasmid of interest, into a sort of hibernation. So you can store them for long term in the minus 80 freezer without having to worry about them getting damaged. All you have to do is take some of your bacterial cell um, culture so I typically do like 500 microliters, mix it with some glycerol. So I typically do 50% glycerol. So then I have 50, 500 microliters of glycerol plus 500 microliters of my bacteria. I mix them up and now I get this solution with 25% glycerol that I can then freeze in the minus 80 and store it for long term. What's happening is that the glycerol is going to act as a cryoprotectant or a cryoprotecting agent, CPA. Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to prevent ice from forming. So ice forming outside of the cells can cause problems because it can concentrate salts and then make water flow out of the cells and make the cells all shrivel up and lice and things like this. We don't want that. And it can, ice crystals inside the cells can also damage proteins and things like this. So by adding glycerol, we're preventing that from happening. We're making it harder for the water molecules to be able to find one another to form those ice crystals. And therefore the glycerol is going to be really helpful. So just a little practical advice about making these stocks. When you're working with glycerol, so typically I start from a 50% glycerol stock, so I have a 25% vinyl because I'm doing half a volume of the glycerol and half a volume of my cell culture. And when you're making this glycerol, glycerol is really viscous. It's really like thick and syrupy. So when you're measuring out the glycerol, instead of pipetting, what I do is I take a graduated cylinder and say I want to make 100 mils of glycerol, 50% glycerol. I'll fill 50 mils of water in the tube, then pour in glycerol until I get to the 100 milliliter line, um, and then I will sterilize this. We want to keep things sterile when we're working with these bacteria. Um, so I, I typically like filter sterilize this. You can also autoclave it. Just be sure not to autoclave it too long um, so that it like caramelizes and turns all brown um, and stuff like this. Um, but now you have your sterile glycerol. You're also going to use sterile tips and all this sort of thing. Um, so when I'm doing this, I typically am doing it often at the same time I'm doing a mini prep. So a mini prep is alkaline lysis. It's a way where we can purify a plasmid out of bacteria. And so say we put this plasmid into bacteria, this process called transformation. And now we want to grow up lots of the bacteria containing that plasmid so we can make, have them make lots of copies of it. Um, and then we can do things like mini prep it to take those copies out um, in a purified form. But sometimes we also want to keep the bacteria that contain the plasmids so that we can work with them later on. Um, also, if we have bacteria that are containing a plasmid, but like our bacteria for expression, so we have like cloning, which are like high copy numbers, so it'll make lots and lots of the plasmid. And then we have bacteria that we use for expression, so we can use them to express a protein, make a protein from that plasmid. And we can make glycerol stocks from both of these, though we're typically only doing the mini prepping out of those cloning cells. Um, but so if you have a mini prep, typically you're starting from a five mil culture or something like this. So I started these cultures last night, five mil cultures. I'm going to take 500 microliters of the ones that I want to make glycerol stocks of, mix those with 500 microliters of my glycerol, um, make like two of those. So I have them in the freezer for long term storage and then mini prep the rest. When I'm talking about long term term. These can actually last for years and years and years. And it's going to be more stable than just like your plasmid DNA in the freezer. Plus you have a source of making more of it um, without having to retransform that plasmid into bacteria. And you definitely don't want to run out of the plasmid before you realize that you don't have more of the plasmid and not have enough to transform into bacteria. And then you have to do the cloning all over again or order more of the plasmid and this sort of thing. So having those glycerol stocks is going to save you time on that as well. When you go to use the glycerol stock in the future, you don't want to thaw the whole vial. Instead, just kind of let it thaw a little bit, scrape a little off the top, streak it out on a plate. Um, you should get colonies. You can then work from those colonies just like you would have worked from the colonies if you had transformed them and then plated them. But you skip that transformation step. You already did that. Why do it again? Plus, you're not having to use another um, vial of your precious competent cells. Um, so you're saving money as well as time and it is really helpful. You can just keep these in the minus 80 freezer a long time and it should be good. So hope that helps and happy preparing your glycerol stocks. And now I got to do some mini preps.